I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. I pray that the purpose of the study will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this Bible study. Thank you for the revelation, for the truth that you are revealing to everyone in the scriptures. I will pray, Lord, our coming will be purposeful and your purpose, your goal, your reason for bringing us to the study. You'll fulfill in every life in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, we'll not be forgetful hearers. We'll learn and remember. We'll study and remember. And when the time comes to apply the faith that comes with your word into our lives, into our hearts, Lord, we'll apply appropriately in Jesus' name. Wake up, everyone. Revive everyone. Put something in every life that will show that we have dynamic faith in you and that faith will keep on leading us and making us to be the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, the Christian we ought to be in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Today we're coming to an important chapter of First Corinthians. We've been studying First Corinthians now for some time. And now we come to chapter 15. Chapter 15 deals in particular with the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The fact of the resurrection. The fruit of the resurrection. And the faith we ought to have in the resurrection that will produce God ordained purpose in our lives, in your life, in my life, in every life, in Jesus' name. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, read chapter 15, reading from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye also have received. And wherein ye stand. Look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, by which also ye are saved. It says, I've declared the gospel unto you. I've preached the gospel unto you. And it is by that gospel you are saved. Hold on for a moment. Did you see why we're here? Did you see what we learn? Do you see why we study? It's so that we can be saved. If we hear the gospel, if we hear the word, and we're not saved, the purpose is not fulfilled. If we hear the gospel, and we have it in the head, and we have it in the mind, and we have it just as knowledge, and we're not saved, the purpose is not fulfilled. It says, I have declared the gospel unto you. I've declared the word unto you. And you have accepted that. You have received that. And you have believed. And it is by that gospel ye are saved. Do you ever think about that in your personal life as you come to the Bible study? As you study the scriptures, as you learn the scriptures, Paul the Apostle was telling Timothy, and he said, from a child, you have known the scriptures, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. That's the reason we study, and the Lord Jesus Christ said, search the scriptures, because in them you know, you think, you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. The Lord Jesus Christ said, ye shall know the truth, ye shall know the scriptures. When you come to the Bible study, you know. When you come to the Bible study, you understand. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
for you to be free from all the entangles of the world and from all the things that bind you, all the things that hold you down, all the things that could drag you to hell and drag you to eternal perdition. For you to be free from them, you need to know. And that's the reason why you are coming. So you check up in your life. I'll be coming to the Bible study. I learn from the Bible study. Is the purpose of learning fulfilled in my life? And then the Lord said, the truth, the word is the truth. The truth is the word. And it is that truth that sanctifies sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth the reason why you come is so that the word will cleanse you the word will purge you and the word will make a difference in your life by which you are saved and by which you are sanctified and then you are kept by the power of the word when you have been saved and you have been sanctified and the word has enlightened you and you are filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost you are empowered and endued by the Spirit of God. It is that word that keeps you on and keeps you saved by the word of his power. And so he says, it is by this gospel that I've declared unto you, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory, that's it, if ye keep in memory, if you don't learn and forget, if you don't hear and forget, if you don't study and forget, if ye keep in memory that what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. That is, if you hear the word and the word does not remain with you and the word does not abide in you and you do not remember the word and live by the word it says you believe in vain what the gospel is trying to tell us that he has preached unto us he has declared unto us look at verse 3 in verse 3 it tells us for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and then in verse 4 he tells us and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures that's what we are looking at today he died according to the scriptures he was buried and then he rose again according to the scriptures tonight we are studying the indispensable resurrection of Christ for our salvation the indispensable resurrection of christ for our salvation when we mention salvation there that means full redemption for our forgiveness for our redemption for our conversion for our adoption into the family of god for our transformation if any man be in christ is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things that become new is for our transformation the word of god that we study and the resurrection that took place is so that we can be saved we can be redeemed we can be forgiven we can be sanctified we can be empowered and put on the way that leads to everlasting life is for our full salvation a free salvation a full salvation a final salvation and it is the resurrection that makes that possible in your life and in my life the indispensable resurrection of Christ for our salvation in the verses we're looking at today verses 1 to 19 there are three things we're looking at number one the gospel of salvation Number two, the grace for service. And number three, the gauge for the spiritual. The gauge for spirituality. Number one is the gospel of salvation through his triumphant resurrection. The resurrection was triumphant. And he ruled, he reigned, he triumphed over death. He triumphed over the false expectation of the people as if he will not rise again. The gospel of salvation through his triumphant resurrection. Number two, the grace for service. 
in his transforming resurrection for us to serve the lord we need the grace of god and the grace for service we find in the resurrection of the lord jesus christ that transforms us we're no more weak we're strong and we're no more doubtful we're very sure we have assurance because of the resurrection of the lord jesus christ there's no iota of doubt there's no shade of unbelief in our hearts anymore because he rose from the dead and he has transformed us and we go with that concept and understanding of the grace for service to go and tell other people he rose again by that resurrection we are saved and you too you can be saved number three the gauge of the spiritual the gauge of spirituality you see if you are going to measure the uh, the understanding of people the spirituality of people you measure it by their faith by their understanding, by their trust, by their confidence in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, people can say, I believe that Jesus was a good man. That doesn't make them spiritual. I believe that Jesus Christ lived a righteous life. That does not make them spiritual. The gauge of their spirituality is that they believe that Jesus died for our sins and that he was buried and that he rose again by the power of God. That the power of God came from heaven and rolled away the stone and all those soldiers fell on their faces and then Jesus Christ appeared triumphant. He died, he was buried, now he's risen again in the faith, in the unshakable faith. It's the triumphant faith. It is the faith that believed that Jesus Christ died and he rose again. And then because of that, you have the power of resurrection walking in your life. That is the gauge of your spirituality. The gauge of the power of God is that he had power enough. And that power raised Christ from the dead. And it is that power now that is able to do anything, everything in our lives. That resurrection of Christ then becomes the gauge of the spiritual man. Or the gauge of the carnal man. If the man does not believe in the resurrection, he does not have spirituality. It's carnal. If he does not believe that Jesus is risen again, he is yet in a sin. The gauge of the spiritual by his trustworthy resurrection. Now, let's look at number one. Number one is the gospel. The gospel of salvation through his triumphant resurrection. The gospel of salvation through his triumphant resurrection let's come back to first corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 it says moreover brethren i declare unto you the gospel i declare unto you the gospel which i preached unto you which also ye have received and wherein ye stand you heard the gospel you believed the gospel you became a child of God, brother or sister, brethren, and now you stand in that gospel that you have received. Then it says in verse 2, it says, by the which, by which also ye are saved. Referring to the gospel, by that gospel you hear, you believe, you accept, you act on that, and the power of the gospel works in your life by which you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And now here is the content of the gospel. Here is the message of the gospel. Here is what he delivered unto them that he referred to as the gospel. Look at verse 3. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, 
Christ died for our sins. That's the gospel. Christ died for our sins and according to the scriptures. And then in verse 4, it tells us and that he was buried. That's part of the gospel. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What's the gospel? Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again for our justification. That's the gospel, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There were Gentiles, Greek philosophers, that wondered, How can you, Paul, an intelligent man, an educated man, how can you believe that somebody died and then he rose again? And to ashamed of yourself, you are talking like you do not understand Greek philosophy. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. There's no other salvation any other place. This gospel that he died, he was buried, he rose again, this is the gospel that is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Everyone that believeth will hear that gospel, will believe the gospel to the Jew first and also to the Greeks, to the Gentiles. Then in verse 17, for therein in that gospel, in that power of the gospel that he died, he was buried, he rose again. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. That the gospel Ephesians chapter 1, reading from verse 7. Ephesians 1 verse 7, in whom we have redemption. We have redemption. How do we have redemption? We believe that Jesus died on our behalf, that Jesus was buried, our sins were buried with him, and then he rose again in new life. And that new life becomes ours because we believe the gospel in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace and then in verse 13 it tells us in whom ye also trusted have time that ye have heard the words of truth ye have heard the words of truth the gospel of your salvation there is no salvation without the gospel it's the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with the holy spirit of promise he gave the promise and then he gave the lord jesus christ to fulfill and to pro provide that salvation and because he died he was buried he rose again and because he's giving us now the power of the gospel the provision of the gospel and we accept that that's how we are saved and we're redeemed and our sins are forgiven acts chapter 13 reading from verse 38 Acts chapter 13, verse 38, Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. There's no other way. There's no other way. Being religious does not bring forgiveness. And doing the best you can, turning over a new leaf, that does not bring salvation or forgiveness. It is through this man who died as your substitute. It is through this man who offered the final sacrifice. It is through this man, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was your substitute and became your savior. It is through him we have the forgiveness forgiveness of sins verse 39 tells us and by him all that believe all that believe that gospel are justified from all things 
from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. That means keeping the Ten Commandments that cannot justify you because you'll miss it at one point or the other. Keeping all the rituals of the Sabbath cannot save you because now Christ is the only one that has offered a perfect sacrifice and that was our substitute and is acceptable to the Heavenly Father. And when you believe, He died for me. When you believe, he took my sins away. When you believe that only through him can you have eternal life, that's when forgiveness comes. The law of Moses cannot bring salvation or eternal life. Look at Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 9. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, look at this, how salvation comes, how redemption comes, how conversion comes unto us. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, if thou shalt confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Look at that. Look at that. You believe in your heart that Christ died for you, and that he was buried, and that he was raised from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Have you thought about that before? There are some people that say, I believe historically that Jesus came to this world. Keep on believing, but you are not there yet. I believe he lived a sinless, spotless life. Keep on believing you are not there yet. I believe that Jesus Christ taught a good doctrine. Keep on believing you are not there yet. I believe that Jesus is a healer. Keep on believing you are not there yet. It is what you believe in your heart, not in the head, not in the mind. Salvation is not philosophy. Salvation is not theory. Salvation is not that I know the Bible from cover to cover. Salvation comes because you believe in your heart that Christ died, that he was buried, that on the third day he rose, and he rose again for you in particular. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, the Lordship of Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. When you truly believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of resurrection of the Lord will walk in your life and it will turn you around. It will transform your life. It will bring righteousness into your life. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it tells us, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, on the name of the Lord, because he believes, he died for me. He was buried. He rose again for my justification. And because of that faith in the risen Lord, he calls upon the Lord, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing. What do we hear? We hear the gospel. What's the gospel? Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again for justification. That so then faith, the faith for salvation and the faith for redemption and the faith to have total forgiveness that you are not coming back to God every time oh Lord forgive me oh Lord forgive me you know it is done and you have faith for transformation so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God Galatians chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 8 Galatians chapter 3 verse 8 and the scripture foreseen that God will justify the heathen through faith. We'll look at the, at the sinner, at the gentle, 
as if he had never sinned. He will forgive him. He will set him free. He will look at him just as if he had never sinned. Justified. That he will justify the heathen through faith. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham. Preach the gospel before unto Abraham. How do you understand that? That's why Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and he rejoiced. The Lord pointed it, planted it in the heart of Abraham. That one will come and it will be the seed of Abraham. And through him, that seed, the seed of Abraham, the seed of the woman. All the families of the earth, all the nations of the earth shall be saved. And Abraham believed that, and it was counted unto him for righteousness, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God that is by the law of Moses by keeping the law of Moses I'm doing the best I can I'm trying to clean up my life I'm trying to be righteous trial cannot make you a Christian it is not trying but trusting and it is not feeling it is faith that no man is justified by the law in in the sight of God it is evident for the just shall live by faith the just shall come alive by faith Christ died you believe that Christ was buried on your behalf you believe that and Christ rose again and you believe that it is that faith that justifies you and that justification makes you just and the faith that brought you in that faith keeps you in for the just shall live by faith uh, in that same chapter look at verse 27 it says in verse 27 that we that he is all the children of God, all those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ. That he is, you have identified with Christ. He died, you died with him. He was buried, you were buried with him in baptism. He rose again and you rose in newness of life with the Lord Jesus Christ for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ are put on Christ look at verse 28 in verse 28 there's neither Jew nor Greek the gospel is for everyone there is neither bond nor free the gospel is for everyone there is neither male nor female because on this level for forgiveness male and female were equal on this level for male and female for salvation were equal it's the same salvation it's the same faith it's the same way that leads out to the salvation of the lord and for the new life male and female equal you come into the salvation of the lord and then for the testimony of the righteous and the spirit of any witness with your heart whether you are male or female were equal the gospel puts us to the same level and we have the salvation of the Lord and we have the ticket to heaven in the same way for ye are all one in Christ Jesus we are all one in Christ Jesus in every nation in every country anywhere we are young or old boy or girl man or woman parents or children we get saved the same way we believe that Christ died for us and that he was buried and that he rose again and we make him the Lord of our lives that's how we get saved in verse 29 verse 29 if ye and if ye be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise it tells us in first Thessalonians chapter 1 reading from verse 5 it's talking about the gospel and the power of the gospel the provision of the gospel
purpose of the gospel in every life for our gospel came not unto you in watch only only talking to the head only talking to the mind but also in the power and in the holy ghost in us much a much assurance as she you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake look at verse 6 it says and ye became followers of us and of the lord having received the word that's the gospel having received the gospel of salvation the word that transforms our lives having received the word in much affliction with joy of the holy ghost and then in verse 7 it says so that ye were examples to all that believe in macedonia and achaia in verse 8 it tells us for from you sounded forth out they sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God, what to God's word is uh, spread abroad so that we need not speak anything. The gospel took root in their lives and the gospel transformed their lives and the gospel bore the fruit that other people could see that they believed the gospel they became transformed they were converted they had the real transformation then in verse 9 it tells us for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God verse 10 then says after they were saved unto wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come that's the gospel and that's the change that came in their lives we're looking at uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 26 and we're reading from verse 22 Acts chapter 26 reading from verse 22 having therefore obtained help of God I continue until this day witnessing both the small and great the small and great the small the young people the children need to hear the gospel that's the only way they can be saved the boys and the girls need to hear the gospel the gospel of salvation the gospel of transformation your children our children they need to hear that gospel the small and the great as great as her parents as old as her parents if the small and the great if they're going to get to the kingdom of god they must hear they must believe, they must act on, they must trust, they must have confidence in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say shall come. Verse 23, that Christ shall suffer, that's the gospel, and that it shall be the first that shall rise from the dead. It shall suffer. He should die, he should be buried, and should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. That is the gospel. Let's come back to First Corinthians chapter 15. Christ died, he was buried, and then he rose again. When he rose, others saw him. The disciples saw him. The women saw him. And in fact, the word of God says he was seen after his resurrection by more than 500 believers at the same time. And at the time First Corinthians was being written, the major part, the greater part of those 500 people was still alive. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 5, after his resurrection, he was seen of Cephas, that's Peter, 
then of the twelve that's all the apostles and then in verse six after that it was seen of above five hundred brethren all at once if some people are saying uh, was the resurrection real was it hallucination was it a trance was it a dream five people cannot have the same dream at the same time of the same night 10 people 50 people 100 people 500 people cannot see hallucination cannot see a dream cannot have the same vision the same time of the same day the resurrection of the lord jesus christ is real after that he was seen of above 500 brethren all at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present this present time and some are falling asleep look at verse 7 it says in verse 7 after that he was seen of James and then of all the apostles then in verse 8 it tells us in verse 8 and last of all he was seen of me also he was on his way to Damascus he was going to arrest and imprison the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ because he didn't believe he counted resurrection the resurrection of Christ as heresy as something untrue as something false and was going to Damascus all of his sudden the light shone from heaven it blindfolded it blinded him he fell on the ground and he had the voice Saul Saul why persecutest thou me and he said who art thou Lord and he said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest it is hard for thee to kick against the priest and he said Lord what will you have me do he said, I saw him last of all he was seen of me as of one born out of due time we come to point number two now point number two we're talking about the grace for service in his transforming resurrection when paul saw the lord jesus christ after his resurrection it brought power for service Number one, he was converted. Number two, he consecrated, consecrated his life. And then number three, he was commissioned for the service of the Lord. And that brought the grace of God to serve the Lord into his life. That's why we come to point number two now. The grace for service in his transforming resurrection. When you think about the resurrection, look at what the resurrection did for Paul the Apostle. He transformed his life. He had hatred for Jesus before, but now he had love for Christ transformed. He had hatred for the people who believed and upheld the resurrection before, but now he's part of them. And he loved the people of God. Number three, he was walking against Christ and against the gospel of the Lord. But now he's walking for Christ and walking in with the gospel of the Lord. For he was arrested the believers before and he will throw them in jail he will compel them to blaspheme but now his life is so transformed that he's no more imprisoning anybody he's even going to the prison now and suffering for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ he was serving religion before number five he was only serving the religion of his father and the religions of the Jews he said he was a Pharisee but now he's abandoned the religion of the Pharisees and now he's preaching the gospel and he's going everywhere he says I'm a debtor a debtor to the Greek a debtor to the Jews and he's pleading with them 
Redeemer on the behalf of Christ repent and be ye reconciled unto the Lord his life was not totally surrendered unto the Lord a change a transformation a saved man a sanctified man a gracious man a godly man that's what the gospel does if you have actually believed the gospel and that's what the, the resurrection of the Lord does if you believe in the resurrection it will turn your life around and what you used to be you will be no more the grace for service in his transforming resurrection first corinthians chapter 15 verse 9 for i am the least of the apostles that i am not meet i'm not fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But then in verse 10, he says, But by the grace of God, I am what, am I, what I am. Am I saved? By the grace of God, I am what am I am. Am I sanctified? It's by the grace of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Am I now fathered and I'm serving the Lord and I'm preaching the gospel? I'm going everywhere and I'm going to the regions beyond. He said, That's all by grace. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Do I sing and do I rejoice during persecution? He said, Yes, but you know why? Because of the grace of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. He served the Lord. He served the people. He preached the gospel. He evangelized the world. He established the church. He wrote the epistles. And he did more than all the other apostles brought together. And he said it's all by grace. He was able to serve the Lord like that. If you will come into the same grace that came as a result of the death of Christ and the burial of Christ and the resurrection of Christ if you come to that grace too you'll be able to serve the Lord beyond your natural strain but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain and I but I labored more abundantly than they all I labored more abundantly than they all in preaching I labored in praying I labored in going from region to region I labored in going from city to city I labored in facing the fury of the Roman government against who I against the gospel I labored I did not shirk in my responsibility because of the grace of God and if you today as well if you want that grace of God if you are passionate about that grace of God if you pray about this that grace of God if you ask and you seek and you knock and the door is open to you if you lay everything upon the altar and you say Lord I want to serve you and I want to live for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ it's my grace and that same grace will be given unto you if you're not waiting for other people let the other apostles all the other pastors let them come ahead and let them do something uh, after all they came to the gospel before me if you're not giving excuse but you say i want the grace of god because if you don't have the grace of god to serve why ye have not because he asks not because you have not asked and you have not asked with importunity and you have not you have not asked with real fervency you have not asked from the depth of your heart that the grace is not there ye have not because ye ask not and then ye ask and receive not because you ask that you may consume each upon your laws the grace of God is not for pride it's not for carnal competition if you ask in that way you are not going to receive 
your ass and you have not received because your ass wants and then you give up but this one goes not out but by prayer and fasting that you say oh lord i must have the grace of god i must serve the lord and i must serve the lord beyond my natural strength i need this grace of god i'll not allow infirmity i'll not allow persecution i'll not allow misunderstanding i'll not allow anything whatever on earth to push me back when you ask like that you receive because god is no respecter of persons he said yet not i but the grace of god that walketh which was with me look at verse 11 it tells us in verse 11 therefore whether it be i whether it were i or they so will preach and so ye believe that grace will be available for everyone in Jesus' name. And look at Hebrews chapter 2. We're looking at verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, reading for verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and with honor, that he, look at this, by the grace of God should taste death for every man. By the grace of God should taste death for every man. He died for your sin. He tasted death for every man. He died for your weakness, your natural weakness. Uh, all people are weak naturally. And in our strength, in the human strength, we cannot offer supernatural spiritual service and since christ has died he died for your sin he died for your weakness he died because of your human nature pulling you down and when you come to the lord and you want the grace of god that depravity pulling you down the lord will suspend and eradicate its power in your life because he by the grace of god he died he tasted death for every man look at verse 10 in verse 10 for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory it's by that grace that he does that he takes us out of sin brings us to salvation by his resurrection he took us from a shame and then he brings us to the glory of god he took us from our past human weakness and he brings us into the power of the gospel he says he has now brought us unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings and then in verse 11 for both he that sanctifies that's what he died for he died to save he died to sanctify both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren now we are his brethren by his grace we now have the power to serve in first corinthians chapter 3 we're reading from verse 9 first corinthians chapter 3 reading from verse 9 it says for we are laborers together with god yeah god's husbandry yeah god's building verse 10 tells us according to the grace of god which was given unto me can timothy walk and, serve and run and preach and persevere like paul yes he can because it's the grace of god according to the grace of god which was given unto me can i can you can any other believer of this present age work and serve and run and persevere like paul the apostle yes we can how 
by the grace of God according to the grace of God which was given unto me. Can the woman, Christian woman, walk and serve and run and evangelize and preach like the man, a Christian man? Yes, she can. How? The grace of God. According to the grace of God which was given unto me. Can you, as a member of the church, was, I was a member, there was a time, I was a babe in Christ, there was a time, I was just an ordinary member of the Christian church, born again, but didn't have the power, the strength, the vision, the passion to preach. And you there now, as a member, can you have the grace of God? Can you serve? Can you preach? Can you pray? Can you run? Can you evangelize? Just like Paul, the apostle, or any of us, yes, you can. How? By the grace of God, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builders thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. And then in verse 11, in verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay, there's no other foundation. There's no other fountain, there's no other resource, there's no other power, and there's no other thing that can give us the ability and the strength and the skill to serve the Lord. It is the grace of God coming from the Lord Jesus Christ and from his death and burial and resurrection for no for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We come uh, then to uh, the word of God as he's telling us about the grace of God. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, and we're reading from verse 9. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, we're reading from verse 9 and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. Remember, God says, I am God, I change not. My grace is sufficient for thee. Remember, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he says, my grace is sufficient for thee. Remember that God is no respecter of persons, that in any nation, in any community, in any local church, anyone that wants the supply of the grace of God, the Lord will supply because it's no respect our persons if you will make up your mind and say i've been hearing and hearing and hearing i want to serve the lord i want to preach the gospel i want to brush all human weakness i want to brush all that aside i want to run the race that is set before me i want to bring many converts into the kingdom of god and i want to preach this everlasting gospel and this gospel of his death burial and resurrection only i cannot do it in my strength and you rise up and say i'm going to do it in the strength of the lord god has no respect our persons as he did for other people he will do for you he will energize you and he will make you to have the grace that is sufficient as he said to paul the apostle he's saying unto you he says my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in wisdom most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities instead of hanging my head and being sorrowful i have this uh, human challenge i have that family challenge he says now most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me and then he says in verse 10 he says Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. But when I am weak, 
then am I strong. When I am physically weak, when I am naturally weak, and when I'm weak by myself, then am I spiritually strong and supernaturally strengthened in the grace of God. And that grace is available for everyone. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 14, follow peace with all men by grace we can do that and holiness without which no man shall say the lord only by grace can we do that and then in verse 28 look at verse 28 wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace that's it we're receiving a kingdom we're preaching a kingdom we're expanding a kingdom we're extending the kingdom we're establishing the kingdom and everything we do is for the kingdom we're seeking the kingdom of god and his righteousness and we're preaching that kingdom and we're proclaiming that kingdom and we're emphasizing that kingdom anywhere and everywhere and we want to to subdue the kingdoms of the world by the kingdom of Christ. How can I do that? How can you do that? It's all by grace. Wherefore, we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace. You know, if you're not expanding the kingdom, claiming the kingdom, living for the kingdom. If there's such a weakness that you cannot live the kingdom life by kingdom faith in kingdom authority, it's because you didn't ask for the grace of God. If your life today is like your life was one year ago, two years ago, there's no fire and there is no passion and there is no drive and there is nothing that makes you to say i must seek the kingdom of god and the kingdom of god must be established in my heart and then i'm going to move on and establish the kingdom of god anywhere and everywhere i go if that passion and that strength is not there is because you have not prayed for the grace of god you are coming to church, no doubt. You are hearing the word, no doubt. But after hearing the word, the grace that will flow into your life and make that possible, you are not seeking that grace. That's why you might be today like you were 10, 20 years ago. Wherefore, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably if you are serving God in the energy of your flesh you are not serving God acceptably if you are serving God like the people of the world they have animal energy human energy and they have persistence and they can stick their head into something only by their natural effort if that's how you're serving the lord it's not acceptable to the lord there must be the grace of god in your life that is there sufficient grace abundant grace transforming grace in that way you will serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear how can we have that grace we ask it's when you ask you have the grace for salvation it's when you ask you have the grace for sanctification it's when you ask that you have the grace for service let's look at hebrews <clears throat> hebrews chapter 4 we're reading from verse 14 seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast our profession let us hold fast our confession what profession is that he died for our sins he was buried he rose again for justification hold that fast by his death we are dead to sin hold that first by his resurrection we come alive in the newness of life hold that fast 
because he tasted death for every man he has taken the sting of death away from you as a believer hold that fast and because he's able to make all grace abound in all things in your life for every good work hold that fast the grace of god is enough and that grace cannot fail and the grace of god does not get old because of the number of years the efficacy of his blood the power of his word and the power of the grace of god is still as mighty and it is as strong today as it was two thousand years ago because that grace like christ himself is the same yesterday today and forever hold that fast and then in verse 15 he tells us for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of infirmities but he was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin look at verse 16 now in verse 16 let us therefore come boldly tonight let us therefore come boldly every time when you pray let us therefore now come boldly but then identify your need i need the grace of god in this area in this area to be an overcomer in this area to be a conqueror in this area to be able to put all things under your feet in this area to serve the lord without fear and without favor and without any fidget in i want to serve the lord with all strength but i need the grace identify that identify the promise of God that God says if you ask it will make you as strong as anybody can be in the strength of the Lord and by the grace of the Lord and you can overcome all the things that have been overcoming you let us therefore come boldly onto the throne of grace we don't come fearfully we don't come doubting we don't come wondering whether i will give or not but we come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and find grace is there and find grace is available and find grace to help in time of need i pray as you come you come boldly with faith and you come with confidence in the lord and all the grace you need to live every day victorious and to serve every day in a purposeful and fruitful manner i pray the lord will grant you that faith in jesus name he cannot fail his power cannot fail the faith cannot fail the grace of god is inexhaustible it's like an inexhaustible fountain and if you come and you bring your cup if you come and you bring your drama and you come and you bring your container and you say lord this is how much grace i need grace to serve you and grace to be victorious and grace to live an overcoming life an unchallengeable life this is how much grace i need that grace is in an inexhaustible fountain it will be available for you in jesus name for your personal life for your family life and to overcome everything that has been waging war against your spiritual life as you come the grace is available there is no challenge you have that other people have not had and overcome and there's no temptation you have that other people have not had and they overcame and there is no ministry you have and there is no calling you have and there's no commission you have that other people have not had and they serve the lord victoriously and courageously and therefore if they were able to serve by the grace of god in the grace of god you too can come and you too can have that grace and the grace will be made
made available to you in Jesus name let us therefore come, let us, everyone, apostle and the prophet and the evangelist and the teacher, let us therefore come, the ministers and the members, everyone, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. It will help you. It will help your spiritual life. It will help your service in the Lord. It will help you in every challenge you face. And you'll be a conqueror and overcomer in Jesus' name. When you find grace to help in the time of need. Let's come to point number three now. In point number three, we're looking at the gauge of the spiritual. The gauge of spirituality by is trustworthy resurrection the resurrection we can trust the resurrection that we know the people that saw him after he rose from the dead they've given us the record is trustworthy and because we have understanding of that resurrection and we believe that resurrection that's the reason why we can come to the lord with the confidence and the trust and the faith in the resurrection and when you believe the resurrection and how much of that resurrection you believe and the way it works as an impact in your life that's how you be gauged your spirituality will be gauged by the trust you have in the resurrection of the lord in first corinthians chapter 15 we're reading from verse 12 now if christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some among you Corinthians? I will say some of you speaking in tongues. I will say some of you that say you have the gifts of the Spirit. I will say some of you that say you have the gift and you do not have the revelation. Say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead in verse 13. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? Then in verse 14, and if Christ be not risen, then is a preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Do you see how it is possible for a church, a local church, a national church do you see how it is possible for a church that has even some gifts of the spirit and they rejoice in the gifts of the spirit and they keep on uh, you know coming out and speaking in tongues and they go on healing the sick and they go on delivering the oppressed and they go on uh, even in external holiness and yet like the corinthians they are not spiritual even though they are manifesting all those gifts because if they do not believe the resurrection if christ be not risen then it's a preaching vain and your faith is also vain and then in verse 15 it says yea and we are found false witnesses of god because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up if so be that the dead rise not look at verse 16 for if the dead rise not then is not Christ raised if you do not believe in the resurrection you'll not have standing standing salvation if you do not believe in the resurrection sanctification will not be possible for you if you do not have faith in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ actually the power of the Holy Spirit and the revelation of the Spirit will not abide in you if you do not believe in the resurrection you are going to miss the rapture when they die dead shall rise and we which are alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds if you do not believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ you'll just be carrying 
empty religion and you have carnal profession of the Lord Jesus Christ, you just believe in the life of Christ before the cross. He, he, was, uh, he healed the sick before the cross. He, he did marvelous things, express before the cross. If that's all you believe, all that he did before the cross, all those things you believe will not save you, will not sanctify you, and will not make you to rise on that final day and be raptured on the final day. It is what he did on the cross of Calvary, that he died and then he was buried and he rose again. That is what brings us a relationship, a reconciliation unto God and into the righteousness of the Lord. That's why Paul the Apostle said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. And so if your religion, if your profession, if your service does not include the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be like those in the Corinthian church who said, they don't believe in the resurrection and preaching for them is vain and their religion is vain and their profession is vain for if the dead rise not then is not Christ raised and then in verse 17 and if Christ be not raised your faith is vain your profession is vain your self-denial is vain your religion is vain and you're trying to follow after the Lord you are following the example and walking in the steps of the Lord Jesus Christ. All that is vain. Ye are yet in your sins because it's the resurrection that brings justification in your life. And then in verse 18, then they also which are falling asleep in Christ are perished. All those who died. Of persecution or died natural death if they didn't believe in the resurrection they have died in vain they perish in verse 19 it says in if in this life only we have hope in Christ because we are healed because we are having you know some material blessings if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men most miserable it is the resurrection that declares how spiritual we are a faith in the resurrection that is the gauge of our salvation the gauge of our sanctification and the gauge of our spirituality it tells us in chapter 2 reading from verse 13 first corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And then in verse 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Those who do not accept the resurrection, they are just carnal. They are just natural. They are thinking about the knowledge of the head. They are not saved. Their names are not in the book of life. They are carnal. They are natural. They are fleshly. It says, for they are foolishness. They don't receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned they're spiritually discerned it tells us in romans chapter 8 reading from verse 6 romans chapter 8 verse 6 for to be carnally minded is dead those who are reasoning uh, by the carnal mind how can the dead rise how can that happen and they have not checked up the historical resurrection of the lord jesus christ the trustworthy resurrection of the lord jesus christ they have not checked up the triumphant resurrection of the lord jesus christ and they have not checked up uh, the the transforming resurrection of the lord jesus christ they are carnal and to be carnally minded is death and to but to be spiritually minded is life and peace that's how the peace of god will come because you are spiritually minded and what the spirit of god has revealed about the resurrection of the lord jesus christ that should 
believe and that you accept and the power of the resurrection works in your life if you have not believed the resurrection you'll be like the pharisees who were who did not believe in angel did not believe in the resurrection and jesus said you are the way you air your air you go astray because you do not know the scriptures neither the power of God. You'll be like those Sadducees that took the disciples and the apostles and imprisoned them because they were preaching the resurrection through the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you have the grace of God and you believe that he died, and that he was buried and that he rose again for justification the power to declare the resurrection of the lord will be given unto you and i pray that from today you'll never be the same again in jesus name look at acts of the apostles chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 33 acts chapter 4 we're looking at verse 33 and where great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all they were imprisoned because they preached and because they believed and because they proclaimed the resurrection of the lord jesus christ but they kept on preaching that resurrection because they said that is the truth and we can have that trustworthy resurrection and we can believe and depend on that trustworthy resurrection no matter the persecution of the pharisees and the sadducees because of that the lord gave them power and the lord gave them the spiritual energy that they will proclaim that resurrection in the power of the spirit of god and with great grace gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all i pray that that same grace will be in every one of our lives in jesus name romans chapter 5 we're reading from verse 8 romans chapter 5 we're looking at verse 8 but god commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners christ died that's how we have the love of god in us christ died that's how that love will operate actively in our lives christ died for us and then in verse 9 it says much more than being justified by his blood because he died for us we're justified we're saved we're forgiven we're cleansed we're turned around we're transformed by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him and then it says in verse 10 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son you see that without that death and without that resurrection we're not going to be able to have the reconciliation with god and the righteousness of god in our lives but if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life not the life before the cross is the life after his death that is the recent life he died for us we're saved we're reconciled and now we have the victorious the conquering life by his life by his risen life that's why paul the apostle said in philippians chapter 3 philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 7 it says but what things were gained to me 
before I knew Christ, before I heard of his death, and before I knew about his resurrection, what things were gained to me when I was galloping and going about persecuting the church, what things were gained to me, the position I had with the Sanhedrin and with the Pharisees, all the things that were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. And then in verse 8, he tells us, because now he has come to Christ, and because now the reason Lord has put power and assurance in his life, and then he says in verse 8, yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, is now made him the Lord of his life, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. And then in verse 9 it says, And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, the righteousness of the Pharisaic or the Pharisaic law, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And then in verse 10, he says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I know him already in salvation, in sanctification, in service, in total surrender, and I've denied myself of the things of the past but now I want to know that power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead I want to know that power more that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death that can happen to you today I said that can happen to you today. He was passionate about it. He was prayerful about it. He pursued it. He said, all the things of the past, they are gone. But now I want to know him. And I want to know the power of his resurrection in my spirit, in my heart, in my soul, in my mind, on my body. The power that raised him up. I want to know the power of his resurrection within and without in my personal saved life i want to know that power in my service to the lord i want to know that power the power that is so strong enough that jesus was a, was a raised from the dead i want to know that power today you can know that power today I said you can know that part today and you can come to the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and you can pray and you can ask and you can make supplication and say I thank God I know him already but I want to know him or the power of his resurrection if you pray with all your heart if you pray with importunity if you pray laying everything upon the altar and you say nothing will stand between me and God I will know him you will know him more tonight you'll know him more and the power will quicken your mortal body and everything of the past that used to drag you down all those cords will be broken you will know the Lord more I will know the Lord more why don't you stand up and tell the Lord I want to know him that I may know him that I may know him, know him as Savior, that I may know him, know him as your sanctifier, that I may know him, know him as your substitute, know him as the power of God in man, know him as the one who died and, and rose again for your victory and for your conquering, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. You want to know him more you want to know him more you want to know him more he reveal himself unto you you know the scriptures and it is through that scripture you are saved and the scriptures revealed his resurrection his death for you his resurrection for you 
and that brings you to the knowledge of salvation and you are no more doubting and you are no more thinking am i saved am i not saved the spirit of god brings that assurance that you have salvation because you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that christ rose from the dead open your mouth and talk to the lord is triumphant resurrection triumphant resurrection triumphant resurrection and that brings the triumphant power of god in your life you'll be an overcomer you'll be a conqueror and whatever the temptation whatever the trial whatever doubts the devil is bringing you'll say i know i am saved he died for me he was buried and then he rose again for my justification and the Spirit of God will write it indelibly on the table of your heart. Child of God, you'll be a witness. You're a child of God. Your sins are forgiven. You're not depending on the energy of the flesh, on the skill of the human nature. You're not depending on what you can do by yourself. I'm trying. You're not trying. You're trusting that Christ died for you you in particular and there is a weakness of the spirit of god in your heart he died for you he was buried and your sins are all buried with him and then he rose from the dead and the power of that resurrection of christ knocks at your sin cleanses your sin takes your sin away and makes you victorious over every sin occasional sin you overcome common sin you overcome regular sin you overcome habitual sin you overcome small small sins you overcome because you believe that's why jesus died he died for my sins and he was buried and he rose again and if somebody does not believe that death and resurrection of the lord jesus christ he doesn't have salvation i believe in christ he walked the streets of galilee that's not enough he healed the sick that's not enough he walked on the sea that's not enough that one doesn't save he fed the hungry, that's not enough, doesn't, doesn't save. And then I'm going to follow the example of Jesus. I'll feed the hungry, I'll clothe the naked, that doesn't save. What brings salvation is that he died for your sin on the cross of Calvary. He was buried and he rose again the third day for your justification. That's what brings transformation in our lives. And that transformation, the power of His resurrection, works in your life. And then all the weakness of the flesh, all the weakness of the human nature, the Lord takes everything away. You can come for the grace of God. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the place of prayer. Come boldly to the time of seeking after the Lord. Come boldly that we may receive help and find grace in the time of need. He gives us grace to overcome temptation. He gives us grace and empowers our lives. Gives us grace to do what we couldn't do in the natural gives us grace to move from the natural and move to the spiritual it gives us grace to live an overcoming life a victorious life sinless life a life that brings glory to god grace grace is salvation grace 
for sanctification and grace for the service of God. We, seeking the kingdom, obtaining the kingdom that cannot be moved, let us have grace. Let us have grace whereby we may serve Him. Without that grace, we cannot serve Him acceptably. We may serve Him acceptably with godly fear and in His love. Ask Him. Ye have not, because He has not. If you ask, He'll give you. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock at the door of His grace, He will open the door. Ask Him. Grace to live, grace to serve, grace to act. Grace to fulfill His will. Grace to walk before Him acceptably. Grace to be victorious every moment. Grace to be a conqueror over the self-life. Grace to overcome every temptation, every trial. Grace to keep on persevering and living according to His perfect will. Let us come boldly to this throne of grace that we may obtain help, find grace to help in the time of need. Is able, is able. Can you be as strong as those in the New Testament? Yes, you can, by grace. Can you be as consistent, as courageous, as consecrated as those on the New Testament pages of Scripture? Yes, you can, yes, you can, yes, you can, by grace. Can you do exploits running the race that is set before you? Not getting tired, not getting weary, not falling down, not falling and rising every time, being consistent, living courageously, victoriously, overseeing self and his society. Yes, you can, by grace. The grace that comes with this resurrection power is able able to save to the uttermost is able able to empower you able to strengthen your backbone able to make you live the way you ought to live a victorious New Testament, new creature kind of life by the power of his resurrection. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh for the grace of God receiveth he that seeketh seeking the grace of God he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh knocking at the door of the throne of the grace of God he that knocketh will have the door opened unto them We believe, and so have we spoken. 
then you have the consciousness of that which the Lord has given. He rose again that you might rise out of your weakness. And you make so spiritual, strong, by the power of his resurrection. Believe and that resurrection power will quicken your Christian life. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for the assurance you have given us once again that the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is real and truthful. We thank you, Lord, because of the revelation of your spirit that now we believe from the depths of our heart that Jesus Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he rose again for justification. I pray, Lord, that this belief and this faith in the resurrection of the Lord will become triumphant in every life in Jesus' name. And will give us the transforming power of that resurrection in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray by that resurrection, we'll live a trustworthy life in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, all the weakness of the past, all the carnality of the past, and all the dropping, falling, failing of the past as the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ penetrates into every life, there'll be victory in every life. Victory over sin, victory over self, and victory over suffering, and everything of the devil will be broken down from every life in Jesus' name. Because we believe in the resurrection, we're no more sinners, we're saints of God. We're no more weak, we're strong. We're no more sick. We're made whole in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, every day and every moment, the faith, the life, the strength, the grace to walk victoriously, conquering every time, give to every one of us in Jesus' name. And Lord, no matter what we have got, no matter what height we have reached, we still pray and demand, like Paul the Apostle, we want to know you more. And the power of his resurrection, we want to have more in our lives, in Jesus' name. Whatever is dead, dull, or dormant in every life, Wake them up by your power in Jesus' name. Let everyone and everything in everyone come alive in the power of his resurrection. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. As we go, we live by the power of that resurrection. The new life we have will be higher and greater, stronger than the life we lived in the past. We thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray.